This Saturday evening, uh, seeing clear skies right now in Watford City. Temperatures are cooling off now just a little bit. They're in the 60s, 70s, and still the lower 80s in Lake Chida. Uh, tonight in Minot, a low around 62 with increasing clouds and a west wind around 6 to 9 miles per hour. Tonight in Bismarck and Mandan, also a low around 62 and increasing clouds and a west wind around 6 to 8 miles per hour. And we do see some showers now heading into our area. I'll tell you more about that coming up at KX News at 10. Coming up on KX News at 10, we'll tell you about a meeting held to save native language here in our state. And who let the dogs out? A wolf-tastic event. I will tell you more. Plus, the history and her story behind a project that works hand-in-hand -hand with our state's human trafficking task force. All that and more coming to you tonight on KX News at 10. Putting North Dakota first. KX News at 10 starts now. Good evening, I'm Adrian Oglesby and thank you for watching KX News at 10. Leading local tonight, the North Dakota Highway Patrol has released the name of the man killed in a rollover crash in McKenzie County on August 26th. According to the NDHP, at around 6 in the morning, Errol Malone Jr., a 24-year-old Minot man, was driving west on McKenzie County, 28th Street, about 5 miles east of Watford City, when he failed to travel across a left curve and drove off the roadway to the right. His vehicle overturned in a north ditch and struck a fence. Malone was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the vehicle. He was later pronounced dead at the scene, the accident is still under investigation. With deer archery season starting this Friday, September 2nd, North Dakota Game and Fish wants to remind everyone something very important. It's against the law to hunt big game over bait. The restriction is in place to help slow the spread of chronic wasting disease, a deadly disease of deer, moose, and elk that can cause long-term population declines if left unchecked. Game and Fish says hunting big game over bait or baiting for any purpose is prohibited on almost all state and federal land. Oral tradition for our Native American tribes has been a part of North Dakota's culture for centuries. And today, Native language experts met at the Knife River Indian Village to talk about saving their Native languages. Members from MHA Nation and our surrounding communities came together to discuss the importance of saving languages. Since many of our state's Native languages have not been written down, our community leaders are trying to teach these languages to the next generation. Dr. Lanny Rilbert teaches language at Little Bighorn College. He has developed multimedia teaching materials for Crow and our MHA Nation's language. He is also an expert in Plains Indian Sign Language. We'll talk in sign language. From what little we know, maybe maybe somebody from the Dakotas, maybe somebody from the uh, from the Mandans will come together like that and then whatever little piece that they know in their language that they would share. Plains Indian Sign Language is an endangered language but active in many indigenous re re regions of North America. Some tribal nations use sign language as a complement to their own language. Slavery is wrapped up in almost every industry, supply chain, tainting the food we eat, the clothes we wear, and the electronics that we love. Human trafficking is a form of modern-day slavery and involves the movement of people by means of violence and deception for the purpose of forced labor or slavery-like practices. A project was created right here in North Dakota to raise awareness, assist survivors, and more. But why? Founder and executive director Stacy Schaefer says it all started with her love for human rights during undergrad, specifically looking into the history of slavery. She tells KX after going to see a guest speaker for extra credit in class, it led her to Guatemala, looking for more answers and a way to help. And while I was working in Guatemala, I met my first um, survivor. So there was a little girl named Anna who was trafficked from El Salvador to a brothel in Guatemala. Well, at that brothel, she was repeatedly sexually abused over and over again. And regardless of who you are or what your age is, that's going to be a traumatic event. And it was for her, but we were able to intervene, um, provide her with services, and today she lives a relatively normal life. Schaefer says Anna is her why. The 31-8 project was created in 2015. But why here in North Dakota, you ask? And that's when we really saw the boom in oil production. And we started 
realizing, hey, human trafficking exists here. It had always been here, but the oil boom just really put more of a spotlight on it. And I realized that there was just a lack of services when it came to this topic. So knowing that I had been working in this field since 2006, I felt like it was just time to do the next thing. She says since January 1st of 2016, the North Dakota Human Trafficking Task Force, which the project is a part of, has worked with over 650 victims of human trafficking. Schaefer says out of that number, 80 percent have been North Dakota residents. It's not the theory of, oh, it's those people coming from other countries or from other states. It's actually people that are living right here in North Dakota. Schaefer tells us the number one increasing form of trafficking seen in our state right now is by victims' family members, which is called familial trafficking. A walk for those lost or currently battling Alzheimer's disease has made its way to North Dakota and will continue to stop in other cities. In Minot, people gathered from all over North Dakota not just to raise awareness but to end Alzheimer's. The Alzheimer's Association estimates that 6.5 million people of all ages have Alzheimer's disease in the United States. According to the Alzheimer's Association, 15,000 people are living with the, with the disease right here in North Dakota. There is over 600 Alzheimer's walks in the nation and North Dakota has Four locations are in Minot, Bismarck, Fargo, and Grand Forks. It warms my heart. It's um, it's so great after a few years to have not been able to gather together in person to see such a great turnout, to see all of the hard work of our volunteer walk committee members and the community come together in support of ending Alzheimer's. KX's very own Lauren Davis was the MC for the Minot Walk, and Bismarck will host their Walk to End Alzheimer's on September 10th. For more information on Alzheimer's, visit our website over at kxnet.com. Buckstop Junction truly went to the dogs this evening with the Wolfstock Festival. As part of our weekend programming, Brendan Rodenberg paid a visit to the new segment, Brendan Rodenberg Beat, also known as BRB. <laughs> It's a lovely evening here at Buckstop Junction, but the place has truly gone to the dogs, thanks to Furry Friends Rock and Rescue. Taking care of animals, even for later adoptions, isn't cheap, especially not if you deal with a lot of them. As such, nonprofit organizations like Bizman's Own Rock and Rescue may need to turn to fundraising events, like Wolfstock, their biggest of the year, to get the finances to do just that. It's amazing to see how this event has grown. The first one was started in Julie's backyard, and we had a small silent auction and a couple of raffles, and that was about it. And here we are six years late, later using almost uh, half to, if not two-thirds, of the facility out here at Buckstop Junction. While not as wild and insane as the event it takes its name from, there's still plenty here to catch the eye, including live music by Electric Rehab, both silent and live auctions, and up-close encounters with some of the organization's adoptable animals. Proceeds from the event went towards furry friends in their ongoing care efforts. The theme for Wolfstock is bringing peace to pets, so that is the heart of the animal rescue is in order to uh, rescue, uh, start, start with the rescue, we foster, uh, we adopt, and then we want to educate. We want to educate people about you know, what it means to spay and neuter, um, how that helps us get on the front end of animal rescue and animal population control. It's always great to see more rescue activism in town, and we can only hope that Wolfstock 2022 brought in all the funds they'll need to keep helping animals in the Bisman area find their forever homes and giving people a howling good time while they're at it. Until next time, this is Brendan reporting for KX News and LBRB. For more information about Furry Friends, their mission, or donations, visit our website at kxnet.com. Coming up on KX News at 10, we'll discuss what hunters can expect this year. Plus, is it sunny or will it rain? Stick around to find out. Your full forecast is still to come. First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us.
You're watching KX News, putting North Dakota first. The Private Lands Open to Sportsmen program, also known as PLOTS, is a popular walk-in access program for hunting. Mike Anderson tells us what hunters can expect this year in this week's segment of North Dakota Outdoors. Hunters can expect around 800,000 acres in the PLOTS program this year, which is similar to the last couple of years. We didn't see a big increase. We didn't, uh, uh, and hunters probably won't see a big change out on the landscape this year. Um, they might find some areas that have a new PLOTS track that they haven't it hasn't been enrolled before, and they might come across areas that uh, a plots tract has expired. With the moisture this spring and summer, habitat conditions on plots are much improved. The grasslands and, and habitat has really rebounded nicely this, this year, and so I think hunters are going to find some pretty good habitat conditions this fall. Kading says it's getting more difficult in the last decade to maintain good quality habitat in the plots program due to the loss of CRP acres, native grasslands, wetlands, and tree rows on the landscape. There are a couple different ways to find the plots tracks while out hunting. It's in printed format, uh, but it's also kind of trending more towards going electronic. Just like everything these days, uh, people are using their smartphones and apps on their phones and web services more, and it's available that way as well. And so every year it seems like we get a little less demand for the printed copies and more people kind of using the, the electronic version. There are rules and regulations hunters need to follow on plots. They're enrolled with the Game and Fish, with the landowner, and uh, that's what's in their agreement, was to allow hunting access, for walk-in hunting access. And anything other than that does require a landowner permission. And hunters need to be respectful when hunting these private lands, too. Uh, it's a privilege to be able to hunt these lands. The landowners graciously enrolled these lands into our program, and we don't want uh, litter or poor behavior out there to affect that landowner's decision to keep their land in our program. This is Mike Anderson in the North Dakota Outdoors. To view or download the plot's guide online, go over to the visit go over and visit the Game of Fish website's department. Stay with us still to come on KX News. It's almost time to open up our National Day calendar. What do you think today is? And stay right there. It's almost time to ride the weather roller coaster. Your full forecast with Taylor is coming up next. Local weather with the KX News Storm Team. 
Welcome back everybody to KX News at 10 on this Saturday evening. It's been a hot one out there today. Lake Metagoshi doesn't seem to be too busy out there this evening. Things are starting to die down uh, as summer starts to take an end. Taking a look at our satellite and radar throughout the day today, we've seen some sunny skies, but now we do see some showers and storms rolling into the west here around uh, Dickinson and rolling into Beach and Medora. Nothing at the moment is severe. However, off to the south, there is a severe weather statement. You can see that little uh, yellow box starting right there. So things definitely have the potential to turn severe later into the evening tonight. Uh, Bismarck seeing clear skies right now. Temperature is 70 with a southeasterly wind at 5 miles per hour. So that wind has also died down this evening. Uh, Harvey also seeing clear skies. Temperature is 70 with a southerly wind at 7 miles per hour. And temperatures are cooling down. They were feeling pretty hot out there earlier today. Now they're in the 60s and 70s. Uh, it's 81 still in Minot. So lower 80s still seeing out there. Uh, 70 in Watford City. And right now in Wolf Point, it's 78. And winds right now are mostly out of the southwest, about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, once again, they were feeling pretty strong out there earlier today, but they have died down now going into the night. Uh, we could see some more showers and storms later tonight, as I just talked about earlier. Uh, and then we could see some more showers possible again tomorrow, along with winds are going to pick up again tomorrow, and we're going to have a windy day on Monday. And speaking of wind, let's take a look at our wind forecast. Tomorrow afternoon, winds are going to pick up about 15 to 25 miles per hour out of the west. So we're going to have a pretty windy day out there tomorrow. Uh, around 11 p.m., the winds are going to lighten up just a little bit, about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, Monday morning, still feeling pretty breezy out there. Winds are going to stay out of the northwest, and they're going to pick up again uh, by Monday afternoon, about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So we have a windy couple of days ahead of us. Uh, taking a look at Precision Cast here, there are those showers and storms that are heading into our area now. Uh, around midnight tonight, they're going to head into Dickinson, and it heads into Bismarck around 3 a.m. tonight, really late tonight. And then around 5 a.m. tomorrow morning in Williston, could see another shot at some showers and that heads eastbound into Minot around 9 a.m. tomorrow morning and things mostly dry up uh, around tomorrow afternoon. Could still see some showers there in the far northwest. However, by tomorrow evening, we're going to get another shot at dry skies and we're going to see sunny skies on Monday morning again. Lows tonight are dropping down into the 50s and lower 60s. Low around 62 tonight in Minot as well as Bismarck. And tonight in Watford City, a low around 59. High temperatures for tomorrow aren't going to feel as hot as they were today, but they're still going to feel pretty warm, reaching into the 70s and lower 80s. Uh, 78 tomorrow in Minot and 79 in Bismarck. Monday's high temperatures once again are reaching into the 70s and lower 80s. A high around 81 tomorrow, or on Monday in Garrison. If we take a look at our 72-hour planner for Dickinson here, tomorrow is going to be a windy day, and that breeze is going to lighten up on Tuesday, along with some warmer temperatures heading our way. And if we take a look at Minot 7-day forecast here, it's going to be a windy day on Monday, and then Tuesday and Wednesday, those temperatures are going to heat back up into the mid-80s, and we're going to see sunny skies along with it. Love to hear the sun. Whenever you say rain, you know what I think of as a kid. Free car wash! <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks, Taylor. Coming up next, every fall sport is officially underway this weekend. Luke will be in next with the highlights from soccer, volleyball, and football.
KX Sports with Luke Gamble. All of the fall sports are back in action, making for a busy yet fun weekend. And we're starting on the pitch tonight. My not back in action at home against Mandan. The Magi looking to keep the wins coming while the Braves look to get back into the win column. First half, it's Minot with a corner kick. Mandan's defense comes up big, though, clearing it out. We go scoreless through the first 10 minutes. Mandan pushing up the field now. Ratmir Spock tries for the goal, but J.J. Duffner with the save. Game tied at zero. Minot's turn now. Tip Clabby looks to break the tie, but Tyler Moe with the catch. Goalies coming up big in the first half. Magi get the lone goal in the second half to take this one 1-0. And Legacy with a big win over Bismarck 1-0. Well, this weekend we add another fall sport into the mix. Volleyball teams tipping things off with tournaments all across the state. And one of the biggest ones is in Bismarck with the BPS crossover. So let's start out with the defending state champ, Century, taking on Grand Forks Red River. Rough Riders trying to jump ahead from the first point. They go up at the net and come away with a big block to make it one nothing. But they haven't tested Claire Ballman yet. On the serve, received the Patriots. Set it outside to Claire, and that's a rocket right down the middle. That's all century from there. This time, playing off their own serve, comes back at the net, and Erica Lee there for the block up front. Century goes 6 and 1 on the weekend to start the season. Let's, let's go to the state runners up. <coughs> Bismarck from last year playing against West Fargo. Demons trying to get at their big hitters early on. They set to the right side for Nora Tippy Fights through the block for the point in the early lead. Bismarck trying to play some small ball early on. They go to the middle this time for Addison Risto. She tips it over. Three consecutive points like that for Risto and the Demons. But the Packers not out of it. A set to the middle ends the same way with a solid tip. Bismarck falls in this one as they go three and four on the weekend. Over to the class B side, Botno hosting their own tournament. The Stars facing off with North Star. First set, Stars up by four. McKenna Wilkie with the soft toss back over the net as the Bearcats get the point. A long volley between the teams here, set outside to Serenity Soul and gets the spike down the line as the Stars go up 11 7. Bearcats looking to stay in this one. Peyton Harpstead with a big block. North Star down at that point. They would split the pat match one set each. To the next game we go, it's Rugby and West Hope Newburgh. The Panthers and Eagles facing off first set. Panthers up six, a set outside to Savannah McCall. Big spike for the point. It's Rugby up seven at that point. West Hope Newburgh trying to stay in it. Kimberly Tabarez gets the spike to the back point corner for the point there. Eagles down 19-12 to set two we go. McCall again with another monster spike between defenders. Rugby takes the early lead. The Panthers come from behind and set two to win two to nothing. Well, the football fun continues tonight as Dickinson opens its season against the new kids on the block in Class 11A, West Fargo Horace. It's a Saturday showdown between the East and the West to open up the midget season. Dickinson's defense dominant early on in this one, not giving up any positive yardage until halfway through the second, thanks to stops like that by Caden Krieg. The offense took some time getting going, but with just over two minutes to go, Sam Steelings cashes in for his first TD, 8-0 Dickinson. The defense helping create new opportunities. The Hawks pass attempt tipped at the line. Caden Richter makes a diving interception for the turnover, but the day belonged to Steelings. 135 yards on the ground, four touchdowns as Dickinson wins it 42 to nothing. Standing Rock also getting a win tonight, 40-37. to and in NFL action, the last preseason game, the Vikings trailing Denver right now in the third quarter. So uh, lots of football happening, lots of sports. Yeah, Luke plays so <laughs> sick they had your coffin up there, man. <laughs> Stay tuned. Coming up next, we're checking out today's National Day calendar. And we're having one last look at your forecast with Taylor.
It's that time we're checking out our National Day calendar. Today we celebrate getting to the good stuff with a creamy custard that stands on its own. Welcome to August 27th on the National Day calendar. Pots of cream may not sound delicious, but pot de creme deserves its own celebration. Think of it as a cousin to creme brulee. Both are made with simple ingredients of cream, eggs, and flavorings that are baked into pots or individual ramekins for a super rich and creamy flavor. Today, most people think of pot de creme as a chocolate dessert, though its texture is close to a vanilla custard. In the Middle Ages, this creamy concoction was used to fill pies and tarts or crustade, which is how we came by the name custard. By the 17th century, people realized that the cream was the best part anyway, and pots of cream became a dessert on their own. On National Pot de Creme Day, celebrate getting to the good stuff with this decadent dessert. I'm Marlo Anderson with the National Day Calendar. See you again tomorrow as we celebrate every day. For the list of all the national days you can celebrate today, head over to our website at kxnet.com. Now, here's the last look at your forecast. Thanks, Adrian. Temperatures have felt pretty hot out there today, and we've seen mostly sunny skies as well. And we do have some showers and storms now heading into our area in the west there, heading into Dickinson. And there is a severe thunderstorm warning for the South, uh, South Dakota, actually, at the moment until about 11 p.m. tonight. Nothing as severe at the moment, but definitely has the... A potential to turn severe later on tonight. And tomorrow's forecast, we're going to have a high around 78 in Minot. Temperatures are going to feel pretty warm this week, and we're going to see some sunny skies out there as well. Sunny and 75. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching, and be sure to tune in tomorrow where we'll have more good and local stuff for you right here at Sam. Have a good night.